Kia ora. You never change things by fighting the existing reality. To change something, build a new model that makes the existing model obsolete. I came to this realization several times in my life. The first one, major one, when I went to, um, to Harvard as an undergrad, freshman uh, out of Ethiopia, first time in the US, um, naive, optimistic, um, excited about the world and excited to learn about what can be achieved together. Well, the first course that I took was um, about the United Nations and read this book uh, with my professor that was titled um, A Problem from Hell. I don't know if any of you have read it. Um, it's about the Rwanda genocide. And she was a reporter, Samantha Power, and she was working to notify the world leaders what was going on in Rwanda, a place that was not too far away from where I was born. And what I learned through her eyes and that experience was when immense atrocities were taking place, the whole world watched and did nothing. And I realized, what is wrong here? Because every single person who had something to do with all those countries and all those nations cared about people, but nobody did anything. So the world being paralyzed and, and inactive in, in action. And I saw the systemic challenge there. You can't blame politicians, you can't blame somebody for not having done something. It was a systemic challenge that allowed what we had recently had said, never again, we allowed that to happen. And then I ended up facing that reality closer to home. Um, after graduating from Harvard, I, I moved to Silicon Valley to work in technology. Um, and I was there really lear learning a lot about myself and the power of creative minds coming together. Um, and I got a letter from the US government um, saying basically that my Harvard degree and my work didn't match in the database um, of qualifications. And so um, I couldn't stay in the US with the visa that I had. And I realized how that whole system was kind of working against itself because all the lawmakers we spoke to, everybody who could do something about it didn't agree with it, but it still happened. And my first reaction was, whose fault is it? Or have I done something wrong? But it was nobody's fault. It was a systemic issue. And right after that, the whole world opened up for me and I started looking at all sorts of opportunities and new things started opening up and venture capital in Brazil or lucrative opportunities in, in London and Hong Kong and, and emerging markets in, in parts of Africa. And they were all really exciting opportunities to um, achieve great potential and expand creativity. And through that experience, I thought, well, if I could do that and, and succeed and, and climb up the ladder, um, I could then use my time to serve others. There was a moment of truth in that, at that time to make a decision. I had the choice. Do I go and work on things that iterate solutions? Or do I go and spend time to build new models? that can make the broken ones obsolete. And so I decided to come to rural New Zealand and, and settle down here in Whitemans Valley because I felt the soil was very fertile here to create global impact, to create new models that can inspire positive change in different parts of the world. And two years after arriving in New Zealand, in this space here, many people gathered to talk about and ideate how we can collectively design new models that can inspire change, that can address a lot of the deep challenges that we see around the world. And in that conversation, a gentleman stood up right on this stage, Nigel Bickle, 
And he said, I love that idea. And government raised its hand and said, let's be part of this. Let's play a role in creating the incubation nation. Let's co-create something unique that none of us can do on our own. And I was kind of pinching myself saying, is he for real? <laughs> and what happened was 18 months later, there was a policy in place. And that was us signing our contract six months ago. And this was last week in Wellington, where we actually launched a brand new visa program with the Edmund Hillary Fellowship and the visa called the Global Impact Visa, which is come create global solutions from New Zealand. It's like the incubation nation <laughs> being fully realized. And where are all the people from immigration in, in this room here? Awesome. We've got Jennifer. <laughs> We've got Jennifer, we've got Khan and uh, Frederic over there. And, and some of these individuals who've been part of this initiative have been working in you know, one of the most bureaucratic institutions that, that we have, but saying we can do better. We can do better than what we have. There is an opportunity out there that we can create collectively. We don't have all the answers, but we can figure it out together. And that was the spirit of co-creation. And recently, Jen mentioned to me that um, there's this new thing at the Ministry of Business that is developed, which is called the Gives Magic. So everything that gives touches, any policy, any new initiative, kind of people say, oh, we've got to think about this in a different way. <laughs> so it is not magic. This is incubation nation in action. And that is really the power of co-creation. That is really the full power of of coming together and building new models, brand new models from scratch that really question the fundamentals of some of the systems that we see are broken. Many of us in this room have had that moment of truth, that decision point where you realize a system that is just not working and you know it deep inside. One of them is very close to us, our food system. 70% of all the food that's consumed on average comes from overseas, so far away. And, and that chart on, on the left-hand side shows you the movement of food throughout the entire world. It is more convenient for the local grocery store in Upper Hutt to import food from different parts of New Zealand and different parts of the world, store it for weeks or months, instead of sell us the food that's grown down the road. This is absurd. Right? But we see what's happening. There's, there's a company that was founded here in New Zealand called Ubi that said, this does not make sense. Let us reimagine what the food system actually could look like and say, let us connect people who are producing food and people who are consuming food, leverage technology to create that level of connectivity and make food accessible, let's localize food. And they've incubated that solution here in New Zealand, and I've scaled it to Australia and, and the US, and are reaching bigger, bigger targets from that. So this solution that we're talking about is happening right here. Another challenge that frustrates a whole lot of us is energy. Today, the model that we've created is for us to dig really deep, past the dinosaurs, to pull out the energy sources that we need for ourselves. And yet, 1.4 billion people still don't have access to reliable energy. It's really absurd when you think about it. And it's finite resource. But what's happening here? I don't know how many of you have heard of Lanzatech. It's a Kiwi company that built new technology, microbes, that convert waste materials, biomass or chemicals, into energy and is the first company to create biofuels to be used for jets 
And Virgin Atlantic is the first company to be testing and experimenting with that. And that happened leveraging the world world-class um, research centers and institutions here in New Zealand and have now scaled this overseas and, and are looking to transform how our energy is produced. And this is not just a company that's creating cool new products. They're looking at it from you know, a, a social, environmental, and economic lens, looking to make a much more holistic impact. So these solutions that we're talking about are taking place right here and being incubated here in New Zealand and, and being taken overseas to address some of the biggest global challenges that we face. Another problem that many of us can relate to is waste. Very soon, when you go out fishing in the ocean, half of what you'll fish will be plastic. That's a bummer. <laughs> How do we get there? <laughs> But we had somebody interested in the Edmund Hillary Fellowship who is building new technology to clean up the oceans and help regenerate uh, the, the fish life in there and reduce carbon because 90% of the, the global warming is, is captured by the oceans. So he's, their team is building a much more integrated solution to addressing a challenge that we all know and is close to us. And that's what really the Edmund Hillary Fellowship is about. It's about creating integrated solutions to known and complex problems. It's not just about taking one piece of solution that we know and putting it elsewhere. It's helping us really rethink the entire model. And it is possible. And it's not just me saying it. There are people doing these things. Last year, we had um, the chief economist for the country out here talking about how New Zealand is looking at progress through that social, environmental, and economic lens. That is not just about money. And many of us know Bhutan and the uh, gross national happiness index that they've developed. Well, the New Zealand Treasury is developing the living standards framework that is looking at progress through that intergenerational well-being lens. And I know several people in this room have been working on that and contributed to that level of work. And when he came here and talked about that, it gave many of us hope. So this idea of creating integrated solutions, rethinking how we approach progress, is not new. It's been happening right here on the soil that we're on. We built the, Sir, the Edmund Hillary Fellowship deeply inspired by Sir Ed. Many of us know a little bit about him. He was just a beekeeper from Auckland a very regular person like one of us. But he said, many people have tried to do the impossible. Well, let me give it a try. Let me go up and do it. And there were many expeditions that had tried to do that and haven't worked. But something else that we don't know or isn't always apparent is, you know, he's the one uh, with, with, with the Sherpa to climb Mount Everest. And his photo and image was all over the newspapers and all over the world. But he didn't do it alone. There were 400 people involved in that expedition. He was the one person to just help one person get to the top of the mountain. It took a whole community, a whole ecosystem, just to get one person to the top of the mountain. So what we're talking about here and what the Edmund Hillary Fellowship is about is not just about the CEO founder. It's not about the one person who we see on top of the mountain. It's about building a whole ecosystem for change. It's about building a whole community of, of leaders working in so many different areas, contributing their pieces to create that new model, that new, uh, better world that we know our hearts is possible. And that expedition in, in 1953, that included so many different countries as well. It wasn't you know, just New Zealand. It was New Zealand, the United Kingdom, um, and, and people from Nepal were, were involved in it. Doing the impossible is not, in today's time, is not just a, a single country thing to do. Yesterday and today we're talking about you know, climate change. We're talking about inequality, poverty. If we're really serious about addressing those, 
we cannot start the conversation by what is in it for us. Let's just look at it from a New Zealand angle. What, 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 what can New Zealand benefit from this right away? If we start like that, then we have failed even before beginning. So building a whole ecosystem, a community of change, of individuals playing so many different types of roles is really what we're, we're incubating here, we're developing here. And many of us are inspired by your de dedication to service and your dedication for impact. And that's really amazing. And we need to activate, we need to mobilize millions of people around the world who are rising up and saying, we can do better. We can build a whole better model than the one that we found. And that's really what building an ecosystem means to us. And I kind of relate it to natural ecosystems like that image that you see here, where you, f you find all sorts of life that are kind of working in harmony, each one playing its own unique role in that life. And you got the birds, you got the bees, the pollinators, the animals, the plants, the soil, the water, the ocean, the fish, the butterflies. All of them come, kind of coming together and working with one another. That's what really ecosystem is about. And when I really think about the Edmund Hillary Fellowship ecosystem, you know, we focus on the fellows, but the fellows are just the catalysts. We need every one of you and more to be part of this platform to actually make it succeed. If we think the fellows by themselves, as CEO founders or so on, are gonna be paving the new path for change and, and, and creating the more beautiful world, it's, it's not gonna happen, I'm sorry to say that. It needs a whole community, a whole ecosystem. We need builders who are gonna photosynthesize knowledge and actually turn it into action. We need artists who are gonna inspire what is possible and shun sunrise on the new life that is growing. We need revolutionaries who are gonna be breaking the glass ceiling and asking really difficult questions and getting us to see a problem in a whole new way. We need investors who are gonna be pouring water so that the new life can keep on growing. We need educators who are gonna propagate new seed so that we can go plant new ones out there. And we need the new seeds, the fresh, young, energetic, naive minds who right at the beginning say, this is a tiny little plant, but it's going to be a cowrie tree very soon. We need also the failed startups. We need failed companies who are going to create the compost. <laughs> right? That's going to create new ideas and new perspectives so that new life can keep on emerging. You gotta put something back in the soil. <laughs> and that's really what, what building an ecosystem means to us. You know, yesterday many people mentioned that, you know, th that there are a lot of challenges here in New Zealand. We can't uh, fantasize New Zealand as just being the best place in the world. Yeah, I totally agree. But the fact to me is we're on very fertile soil for impact. And what's arbitrary, what's in our decision point is what we actually do about it. What seeds we decide to plant on this fertile soil. And we're just in day one. We just launched it last week. <laughs> we're just beginning. And so this is a collective activity. This is, this is a, not just a national, this is a global platform that's being created here. And there are roles and opportunities for each person in this room and many, many more to plug into this. So we want to work with you. We want to work with every one of you to make this a success and to leverage this platform to create what any of us cannot create on our own. And on this path, I invite you all to think, what is my passion? What is that unique gift that I can offer to, to this collective ecosystem? What role do I see myself playing in this that helps catalyze others? 
Sometimes you might not see the result right away, but that's fine. That's, that's the part of being part of an ecosystem. And that's really the beauty of, of where we're starting. So we launched last week. We're getting applications for fellows. Our first cohort arrives here in October this year. We're aiming for up to 100 people from around the world and 20 from around Aotearoa, New Zealand. Because it's a collective activity. But those are just the catalysts. Those are just the faces that we see. Behind that, we're in developing a whole ecosystem. We're creating a skeleton of it. But we need to add more flesh. We need to add more life to it. And we're figuring it out as we go. And part of that means inviting you all to be part of this conversation, to be part of this co-creation, to be asking us the questions that we do not ask ourselves, and to be building the blocks that you see are required to creating such a thriving ecosystem for, for New Zealand to thrive as an incubation nation. And so I invite you to be part of this journey. We're going to be having many conversations today, run workshops. Please come talk to me, come talk to our teams with new ideas and new perspectives at New Frontiers or next week or next year or 10 years from now. Because this ecosystem will take a long time to build and a long time to grow. But it started here two years ago. Here we are today. And I'm very excited for where we'll be in a year from now or two years from now. And it took twice as many as you know, people in this room to get us to where we are today. So very excited to continue to increase this family and, and, and build this ecosystem together. Thank you.